Good morning, SQUIM. My name is Jane Prine, and I'm the interim superintendent for the SQUIM School District. It is Monday, May 17th, and we have some new updates for you. First of all, we will be sending out later today a superintendent search survey that is being uh, put out to, to all of you by our search consultants, um, Human Capital. And so we would like you to fill that out so you can put in the characteristics of what you'd like your next superintendent to uh, be doing and, and to be like. So make sure you fill out that survey when it comes your way. Also, even though the mask mandate has been lifted by the CDC, and I'm sure Sonia will talk more about this, at schools, that mask mandate has not been lifted. So I just wanted to let everybody know that we also um, still have six foot distancing and at, uh, in our classrooms and at lunchtime and um, nine feet distancing with our choir and our um, music performing arts. So on that note, I will pass it over to Sonia so she can fill you in on some of the um, finer details of that. Thanks, Sonia. Good morning. Well, I think the biggest news this morning is certainly uh, that vaccinations, uh, especially the Fi particularly the Pfizer vaccine, has opened up for kids 12 years old and up. Um, so 12 years old, up to 17 years old, there's only the Pfizer possibility there. Um, 18 year olds and older can get the Moderna and the Johnson and Johnson. So I have an interesting brief article from the Public Health Insider that's produced by King County Public Health and they say what parents should know about vaccines for 12 to 15 year olds. Um, and obviously there's always a concern when we talk about vaccines because that's where the fear quotient comes in is that is there a downside. So they were talking about in this article about the testing. Over 2,250 uh, volunteers in the 12 to 15 year age group participated in the clinical trials. They found no cases of COVID-19 among the fully vaccinated adolescents. According to the study, adolescents had side effects similar to young adults. The main side effects are pain, fever, chills and fatigue, particularly after the second dose. These side effects are, are normal and are signs that the body is building immunity. In addition, teens aged 16 and 17 were among the tens of thousands of volunteers who participated in the clinical trials that started over a year ago. Those trials, along with the results from the millions of people who've been vaccinated so far, have found that Pfizer vaccine is over 90% effective with an excellent safety record. So uh, certainly uh, when it comes to getting your student vaccinated, it is important that an adult is present. Clallam County will not vaccinate a child younger than 18 or rather younger than 15 without the parent present. Um, students 15 to 18 or 17 can uh, get a parent permission form signed and not have to have the parent present. So and additionally, they do add that if parents have more questions that they should definitely talk to their doctor or healthcare provider who are great sources of information and they have your student's medical history which is important information. The Washington State Department of Health reported this weekend that while vaccines are not required for in-person learning they certainly can help us reduce the transmission of COVID both in school and in the broader community. So all of our prevention strategies Although they offer some protection, it's the layered effect that certainly gives us the greatest level of protection. And that's why you will see all of the mitigations currently in place uh, continuing on not only through the end of this school year and summer school, but into the fall, um, especially masking. Uh, there may be some changes in allowing for cloth mask for staff, which uh, has been somewhat restricted this year, but I do feel that that is one thing that will continue to be one of our mitigations, particularly because we don't have a vaccine yet for students age five and older. So we are uh, offering to help Clallam County provide vaccinations for our kids in SQUIM by volunteering the use of the SQUIM High School cafeteria and that vaccination clinic this coming Sunday on the 23rd is from 10 till 2. The Pfizer vaccine being offered would then again be offered 21 days later and we are working with the Boys and Girls Club 
for the week of Sunday the 13th, Monday the 14th of June to provide a second vaccination for people who come this Sunday. But just so you know, the Pfizer vaccine is available now in our community from uh, the Squim QFC and from Walmart. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. A lot of really good information there on vaccinations. So next, I would like to turn it over to Victoria Ballant, our HR director, who has some updates from our HR department. Victoria? Thank you, Dr. Prine. The Human Resources Office of Squim School District exists to support the goals and challenges of Squim School District by providing services that promote a work environment characterized by fair treatment of staff, open communications, competence, personal accountability and trust and mutual respect. And I think what I really want our community to know is that when we staff, we are very intentional about it. When folks retire or resign, we press pause and we really think about what our students need the most, what our district needs before we just replace staff exactly as before. And as we think strategically about staffing for the coming school year and beyond, we're really reimagining what some of our positions look like. And this process has given birth to the creation of an equity and family engagement coordinator, to the reshaping of our instructional coach to include an equity piece as well. When we interview, we ask the questions we ask in order to mine for those qualities that we need the most. And these practices have resulted in some amazing folks recently being added to our team. Today, we welcome Jennifer Cox as our new District Assessment and Student Information Manager. We're currently screening applications for our two assistant principal positions, and we're interviewing this week for our new Equity and Family Engagement Coordinator. We are confident that the pride that you, our community, have in Squim School District will just grow from here. And really, that is the news that the HR department has for you. We just want to thank you for your support, for our staff, and for um, all the good things that are happening here at Squim School District. Dr. Prine? Thank you very much, Victoria. Well, that is exciting. We're getting some um, new people aboard and it looks like we'll be gaining some more new people. So that is just fabulous. And we've expanded our, our job descriptions to include our equity work, which we are beginning in the district and very excited about that. Also to, on tonight's uh, board agenda, speaking of equity, I please look at our back to school plan. It is out there right now and the board will be discussing it tonight with hopefully a um, and approval next Monday night at the May 24th board meeting, but there is an equity piece in there as well um, added to our back to school plan. And next we have Darlene Applin, who is our Director of Finance and Operations. Darlene, what's new? All right, well, um, I guess the thing that <clears throat> is the, the right, uh, following what you had to say is that tonight's board meeting from five to 520, when the Wenahog group will be giving a capital a project management presentation and then from 525 to 545 Vanner construction management will also be giving a presentation. So these are the two um, companies that have been brought forward to do presentations to our board and to possibly oversee our $15 million um, capital projects that will happen over the next um, several years. So um, you can sign into our board meeting starting at five o'clock for those two presentations before our regular board meeting at six. And then on the food service side, um, April meals, we served uh, 28,175 meals in the month of April. And uh, let's see here. Just a reminder that we will do meals for summer school and that the food bank will do produce boxes and those will be available on Wednesdays for pickup at our pickup locations um, this summer. And the Boys and Girls Club will be distributing meals over the summer as well and those times and locations will be coming soon. So um, 
Remember to fill out those free and reduced forms, uh, even though our meals are free, because they um, impact other other fees that your students might be um, needing to pay throughout the school year. Thank you very much, Darlene. And on that note, we would just like to invite all of you to listen to the Rise and Prime podcast every Friday morning at 6 a.m. And we currently have one online right now with our special ed director and a very special guest along with her. So please listen in. And right now, I would just like to say have a wonderful week. And I think the sun is coming back out. So enjoy your week. And on that note, we'll see you back here next Monday. Thank you.